Hey guys, Joe here doing a hey it's been like a week and you haven't rebuilt your computer thing thing. And today is going to be the day that we actually go ahead and put the 4790K system together. And we're going to do that by disassembling the 3470. And then that motherboard will migrate into another case, probably my NZXT, which will go into my bedroom, which will become another TV. One thing I've decided is I am not going to disassemble that one to get the water cooler off of the CPU block. That's going to stay water cooled. Originally, I was going to do it. I was going to take it apart. I was going to put that one on air or the all-in-one cooler, and I decided against it. Number one, I've used that water block like 12 times already, and I think it's just time for a different one. And number two, I've got that system working good. I don't want to screw with it. And the minute I screw with it, that's when it's going to stop working. So what we're going to do is disassemble this one, take all the parts off of it, and then we're gonna put the 4790K MSI motherboard, which is, hold on, I'll grab it, which is this one. And as you can see, I've actually gone ahead and cleaned it up uh, as best as I can. There's a couple of spots in there I need to get in there with a, uh, a brush, but uh, overall, I got everything off the processor, cleaned up all the dirt that I could, got a uh, mount for the water cooler. I'm missing one of my posts, but uh, that's why getting creative works. So. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and put this together. If you saw the video, you'll see when I pick this up. And uh, yeah, so pretty much the job now is to disassemble that system, this system, take the, uh, well, everything off basically, except for the hard drives. I'm gonna leave those where they are. I think I'm going to use extended screws, hat, and uh, mount the radiator, actually mount it so that it sits out a little bit and then we will uh, put it back together. So I don't really do montages, but we'll let it film for a while and see how far we get. So not a good looking board before I go too much further. I mean, the RAM is the wrong color, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop you until I get to the next point. One of the major differences between that motherboard and this motherboard is that I'll be able to mount the card in the correct orientation. The uh, SATA plugs obviously are going to go underneath the card at that angle, but they're not going to intrude in the way. And uh, yeah, that'll work good. And if you notice, this one also has an M.2 slot up there, so that'll be good. And then uh, we'll mount that. A direct connection into a Time 16 slot gives you a much better connection than a really old and possibly not working right extension cable plugged into a Times 8 slot. As you can see, Radiator is separated from the motherboard. The motherboard is separated from the case. New motherboard is ready to go on case. So it's a very simple process. We just kind of, uh, well, we find the standoffs that I pulled out from the other motherboard and we put them in here and we bolt everything down, bolty, bolty, bolty. And then we're going to mount the GPU the way it's supposed to be orientated. And then we will be happy. I'm still working on the uh, radiator, which way I want to mount that. But uh, that will be also dictated by how far the run is from over here to over here. And if it's too long, then I'll just leave it the way it was. Because the eventual goal is to build a custom water-cooled uh, loop for this one as well. Using a single 360 millimeter radiator. The reason we're gonna go with a single 360 millimeter radiator is because I do not intend to water cool my graphics card. As I've said in previous videos, I wanna cool the CPU. I don't care about cooling the graphics card because I wanna be able to change it on this system because I like to change this system quite frequently. And if it's completely water cooled like my workstation, that's not gonna happen. So the next thing to do is mount the new motherboard or the new i7 motherboard on here get it all connected and see if she powers on. Here we are. It's been a little bit of time, about half an hour. I don't know why all of a sudden I decided to talk like this, but uh, I've got that mounted and I've decided that I'm going to actually get a couple of L brackets and we are going to mount the radiator like this out just a little bit so that I can run push and pull on this, but I'll have to get those brackets tomorrow. Just some simple L brackets that will go through the uh, grating here as well as attached here behind the fans 
for now, we'll just leave it the way it was before with a couple of fans balanced up there or something. So the next thing to do is install the graphics card, the RAM, and get it booted up and into the BIOS. I'm gonna do that over on my big screen over there because I don't feel like disconnecting all my cabling from this computer. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Hopefully, okay, that's gun oil. I saw liquid on my desk here and I was worried it was from this radiator, but it's uh, it's not, it's, it's, it's gun oil, I hope. There's some damage to this radiator, but yeah. Well, once I have it reassembled, I'll uh, come back to you and we will boot it up and see what it does stock and then we'll see what it does overclock because the point of a 4790K is to get some performance out of that some bitch. So uh, I said this one wasn't leaking. It is leaking. It's leaking from the uh, actual CPU block, which it's not good. However, I do have a smaller all-in-one that will keep it cool enough. I just might not be able to overclock it as much. So we'll just take the, yeah, a lot of liquid under there. Ooh, that ain't good. But uh, yeah, so we'll just take that and transfer that over to my single 120 millimeter and we'll see if that works for a little while. At the very least, it'll keep it low, cool and long enough, cool and long, long enough for me to uh, just have some fun with it until I can put together that water system that I'm now forced to build. I do have a feeling this is gonna wind up on the weaker side of things, but it should still, again, since I'm not trying to overclock it much, at least give me some overclockability and let me see what the processor is capable of. I don't know what kind of overclock my buddy had on it. Uh, he was a gamer, but he wasn't like an extreme overclocker and he didn't run a lot of synthetics like I do. So we'll see what happens. And I know what you're thinking as I'm doing this. Why don't you just uh, get a different AIO, like a newer style Corsair or something? Well, a Supreme, uh, excuse me, an Evo Supremacy block for the Intel line is like 56 bucks. A 110i or whatever the GT or whatever it's called now would be a lot more money. And it's money I don't want to spend, so I'm not going to spend it. Uh, especially for an AIO when my AIOs are usually used short term. So hopefully that answers your AIO question. If not, you have more questions than I can answer. So it wasn't exactly my intention, but as soon as I plugged it in, it turned on and it went into the BIOS. And it shows that I got 28 gigs of RAM, which is right. It's sitting at four gigahertz. Memory's at 1333, we'll be changing that. So I just wanna boot it into Windows once I change my boot order and we will then do what we need to do. So uh, give me just a minute to monkey around with these settings and then we'll come back after we make sure that's working, so. Yeah, impromptu. I was just setting it up with the uh, radiator and when I plugged it in, the computer just started right up. So good thing, bad thing, but we'll keep going. Temps seem to be doing pretty good. So I think the next thing to do is go ahead and run this test with the system at stock and see what she comes up with. And as we enter the home stretch, the score is going to be a 836. So it does beat the 4770K and I'll zoom in. As you can see, the 4770K, which is its predecessor, is a little bit lower at 822. This one's at 836, which means that it's about 300 points faster than the 3470, yet still significantly slower than the 6800K was. Not much I can do about that. I'm just going to have to, I guess, live with that. Looking at hardware monitor, it looks like it got up to 48 degrees on the hottest core, and that's not terrible, but that obviously means I'm not gonna have a ton of room because I like to keep my processor under 60 degrees under full load, so I'm not gonna be doing much in the way of overclocking. I may just see if I can get it up to about a thousand points uh, with a quick, small overclock. But it is boosting right to 4400 megahertz, so maybe I'll leave it the way it is. I don't know. 
Give me a few minutes and I'll see what I decide. So after some tinkering, we wound up with a score of 945. Now that score is lower than my X58 workstation, but you also have to remember that when it comes to synthetic scores versus actual real world applications, the i7, especially the 4790K, 4770Ks, the K SKUs, they're designed for IPCs, instructions per clock. They're going to be faster with each individual core that they have over the comparable Xeon. Although Xeons are built to run harder and longer, so it's kind of a eh. Plus this is an i7 4790K, so it's a little bit newer, it's a little bit better generation, it's a better iteration, it's going to just in general, in general, in general, be a better experience. As you can see, it got up to 62 degrees Celsius at 4.8 gigahertz. And you know what? That's fine, I'm leaving it there. So basically what I did was I made this system, which is now twice as fast as the i5-3470. It's about 80% as fast as my X99 was, which, spoiler, I still haven't sent in yet. I'm gonna do that on Monday but I have a gaming rig. It's a 4790K with a 980 Ti Zotac Amp Extreme. At the time, these two were a, would have been a great combination for somebody. And being DDR3, it's not as dependent on the RAM being the same exact size. So I actually have 28 gigs because I only had three eight gig sticks and one four gig stick laying around, but they all work fine. They're all G-Skill, they're all uh, 1600 or better rated, and I'm running them at 1600, so. I'm good to go there. The last thing I'm gonna do, and I will give you a report on it, is whether or not running it in a PCI time 16 slot really gives me that much better of a graphics score in Fire Strike. Well, one thing I can definitely say for sure is that the graphics card is working harder than it did before because it never got above 70 degrees, but again, the last time it was hooked up into that system, it wasn't sitting like that. It was sitting vertically, which may have aided airflow. That is a hell of a card to try to cool down, but that's running much hotter than it was before. So I'm not happy with that. We'll see what happens there. Overall, it seems to be running about the same, so I'm not even gonna complete the test. But uh, yeah, that's it. So there you go. Quick, down, dirty, easy. I started at about uh, 6.45, it's now 8 o'clock, 8.30. So under two hours, done and reassembled and plugged in and running. So hope you guys enjoyed that. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you have any comments, leave those down below. Don't forget to subscribe, we're getting close, almost 900. Thank you guys so much, especially the new subscribers and my old subscribers. I don't know why I say new subscribers only. You're important to me too. I love you guys. And as always, I'll talk to you later.